And now let's get to a specific syndromes. We define coma, what it is. It's an erosible unresponsiveness. But we're gonna now do syndromes, which in a way simulate this, but they are not coma, okay? And first one, and first one has many synonyms. And basically, if you remember the synonyms, you don't have to remember anything because each synonym tells you a part of the puzzle. And if you remember all of them, then you can beautifully describe what is the syndrome. And first term, that's the oldest term, it's apalic syndrome. And apalic syndrome, you know, what does it mean? It's old and it's not used because, well, over here it's used a lot, but still they think it's politically incorrect to say apalic syndrome. So they rather use different terms. But apalic means, pallium means a peel. If you have an orange, for example, the peel from the orange in, in, in Latin or I guess in Latin, pallium. And if you lose the peel, what does it mean in terms of brain? It's the cortex, isn't it? So basically these people, the idea is they don't have a cortex functioning. So how will they look like? Their brainstem is fine. They just don't have a cortex. So they have no faults. The idea is they are not aware of themselves and they have no faults going on. And this is the dilemma, because if you say someone is apalic, you basically say he's vegetable. And some cases, fortunately, wake up from this state. So obviously, it's not like 100%. So that's why uh, it's a old term, but beautifully describes the idea. So, so apalic syndrome means that they are not aware of themselves and they have no faults. So their brain cortex is somehow turned off. Okay, and there are ways the cortex could be dead or I'll give you other examples. Okay, but what is the other synonym? And you're going to know this one. It's vegetative state. Okay, vegetative state. So it's vegetative state. The other synonym is vegetative state and vegetative state beautifully describes what is working over there. The brainstem is working, the vegetative system is working. So basically you should imagine someone that has no faults, but if you give him something to eat, he eats it, he, he swallows it, okay, etc., etc. And he has a day and night cycle, for example. He sleeps in the night and uh, wakes up in the morning. And basically if you look at the person from far away, you think he's okay. You come to a IC unit and you look at them from far away and they look like alert and everything and then you come to them you ask them how are you or whatever and there's no response at all totally ignore you okay but they have open eyes so they so, so they, there is this vigility full they, there could be full vigility but we say there is no contact okay so vegetative state another synonym is coma vigile and this is a play with the words Coma vigile. That means they're vigil, they're awake, but their mind is in coma only. In this term, the coma, it's play with the words, okay? So they're in coma in a way, but uh, vigil, awake. And another synonym is locked out syndrome. And this is pretty nice, locked out. Their mind is locked out from the chest. Chest is working, that's the body, but the mind escaped somewhere in the clouds. So locked out, okay? Locked out, okay? And if you remember these four synonyms, you don't have to remember anything else because you're going to always figure it out later. And 
what could be the mechanism? And typically, it's after trauma, for example, like serious brain trauma. I mean, like really serious. Okay, so serious brain trauma. of the brain or it could be a stroke stroke okay and other causes but these are the most important one and then I'll give you still another one but or maybe I'll I'll put it here like one more the AI diffuse axonal injury not to forget it okay and and this is beautiful part of physiology, actually. Apart from trauma, which is, you know, with trauma, it's always like you're very unprecise, you know. It's, it's by chance or whatever, or by the edema, which can develop afterwards. Okay, but, but can you figure out a pathophysiological mechanism which beautifully destroys only selectively the cortex and still keeps the brainstem first of all alive so you have to diffusely kill the cortex in both hemispheres because if uh, the cortex in one hemisphere is okay you should still be kicking in a way okay the, this is what you see in in strokes like if the carotid artery is closed you know then one sided stroke is very diffuse but still the patient is like thinking so what do you think well, it's our our beloved hypoxia, so come some kind of hypoxia. So if the level of the oxygen in the blood is decreased, or even better, ischemia of the brain. And when this happens, when hypoxia or ischemia of the brain happens, but it has to be diffuse ischemia of the brain. And it's typically when your heart stops, for example, okay? When the pump is not pumping, or you're in a shock or whatever, then what? Then the brain is starts to die, and it always depends when the reperfusion happens. Do you understand? Okay. If my brain is uh, ischemic for a while, but then there is reperfusion again you know that the most active parts of the brain will die because th those are the most ATP dependent. But the ones which are not so much ATP dependent will still survive. So it's the factor of time which kills selectively the cortex because the cortex is evolutionary the youngest and the one which needs the most of ATP to work. So the cortical cells will die the first and basically by luck, but this is not a luck maybe, this is uh, unfortunate for the person. Let's say his heart stopped and someone came and resuscitated him. Or he could start it again, he, he would have some uh, ventricle fib and this, this would resolve itself or whatever. But at the time, when this happens at the time when the cortex is dead already and the deep structures are functioning like the brainstem, you will end up in vigil coma coma vigile or vegetative state okay and basically if we will define it like this it's irreversible okay and this could be also due to hypoxia when you're drowning for example and they take you out at the moment where your cortex is already dead but still the brainstem survived okay yeah and this is beautiful part of physiology so remember general hypoxia and general ischemia of the brain will beautifully create a apallic syndrome or vegetative state okay trauma is very debatable because you know it's never so clear destruction of the whole cortex there are diffuse contusions and whatever and that's why also in trauma if someone you know has a car accident now he's awake but not responding that would be vegetative state still they have pretty good chance to wake up okay and watch out basically in trauma still if you're one month in in vegetative state that means not in coma but vegetative state you're looking around but no response uh, 50 percent of people will in one year wake up still so there's a pretty nice chance 20 like 20 percent will die in one year but 50 will sort of wake up in one year okay 
And th there's much worse outcome with strokes. Only 15%. If, you're, if they are, typically many of them can wake up in the first days, but if they are still in vegetative state for one month, then that they will wake up from this state in one year, they have only 15% of chance, okay? So it's it's much worse outcome, okay? And 47% or 50% will die in that year, okay? So be in vegetative state after stroke, and that would be, for example, diffused ischemia of the brain, okay? Yeah, so, so, so much worse case. And these will rather stay like this, okay? These have a much bigger chance. In contrast to that, these guys have very bad chance. There is almost no way to wake up or to improve in the state. And what is DAI? DAI means I'm driving a car, I'm having airbag, airbag goes out, but unfortunately, I'm making a fast rotation of the head. And if, if the head spins like this, there and back, you basically tear the axons in the brain. And this is irreversible state. CNS axons are torn. Axons are torn. Okay? Yeah? And this is irreversible state. You won't do anything with this. And typically, how you can say someone has DAI is, you don't see it too well on CT. Or basically, if you're not thinking of it, but, and this could happen in cycling or in skiing, it's, it's about the rotation of the head, okay? And typically with DAI, the person is, he can be in coma, that's very typical, typically he's in coma, or he could be in a vegetative state, so looking around, but no response, or he, there could be some lighter damage, okay? So it always depends on the level of DAI damage. But I'm giving you an option now that they end in vegetative state, for example. And there is a great discrepancy between the state he is in. So he's in vegetative state. And if you do a CT, it looks pretty normal. The CT, you, you can see the gyrification of the cortex. And the cortex looks beautiful. But then you see small dots, blood dots. So the cortex would be, well, pretty normal. So someone after accident, he has no contusions or whatever, or he can have them. And you can see just small few dots, like you don't have to see it, uh, small dots in the middle. And this is typical thing that you should uh, think of when you see a nice CT, sort of nice CT, brain, brain CT, and a severe state in which, neurological state in which the patient is, think of DAI, diffuse axonal injury, okay? And some of these people will end in vegetative state. Okay. The worst cases are definitely in coma, like full coma. Vegetative state is not full coma because they're reacting to light. They have a night and yeah, get it? It's the vigil coma, coma of the gila. Okay? Good. And by the way, there's one person who is the most famous out of all the people that are in vegetative state, and it's Terry Schiavo. And she had a heart arrest very like she was bulimic. And very likely uh, what happened is, remember from today, please, remember that bulimia is very dangerous in terms of repetitive vomiting. Always think of major ion disbalances as someone vomits repetitively and what ion you are afraid of losing what ion. If this is a stomach, Remember, there's exchange of ions, okay? And basically what you're having is H plus goes inside at the end and potassium goes inside. Maybe you remember this from, I don't know, from physiology. But anyways, if you repeat repetitively vomit, this exchange is not catching up and instead of vomiting H plus, you're vomiting potassium. So typically they have hypo kalemia. And when you're having hypokalemia, you should think of arrhythmia, cardiac arrest, and that's very likely what happened to her. And unfortunately, the heart started to beat or they resuscitated her just at the moment when she lost the cortex cells. Okay. And why this is so much 
legally important, why all the vegetative states are so debated, because on one side you don't know if these people will wake up or not, okay? And on the other side, the brain death, which we're going to talk about, is defined by the death of the brain stem. You get it? So all the people in this state are having functional brain stem. And because their brain stem is functional, they don't have a dead brain and you cannot just let them go. You cannot just say they're dead. They're not dead. And they still have some kind of chance to wake up from this state. Of course, the longer they're in the state, the lower probability they have to wake up. But still, you cannot just let them, you know, uh, go. Because the brain stem is not dead. Brain is not dead. And that's why you cannot turn off the machines. Or definitely you cannot stop feeding them. And if you stop feeding them, that's the way how you turn off their life. Okay. At the core, they were discussing you know, if to turn Terry off or not and whatever, what to do. And so that's why it got so publicly famous. Okay. But this is with all the vegetative states, this dilemma. You cannot just send them for transplantation because their brainstem is alive. That's the problem. Okay. So that's vegetative state. And let's get to another state. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.